Scott Holiday here for Plus Two Wrestling, and my voice is going, which is not good when you're a color commentator. So we're going to muscle through this together. Thank you so much for being here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let's plug in. This very Saturday, November 14th, it is CZW Live on the Battleship. Yes, a wrestling show taking place on the Battleship New Jersey, located at 100 Clinton Street in Camden, New Jersey. And there you will see a battle for the CZW World Heavyweight Championship as Rich Swan defends against the missing ingredient, Chris Bishop. Chris Bishop just came back from overseas. He was practicing his craft over in Europe and now is back trying to capture CZW Gold. Also looking to capture CZW Gold is the former tag team champions, CMD. They have waited, not patiently, but waited for their shot at their gold to get that back from Milk Chocolate, and they are finally going to get their opportunity with Home Court Advantage. Also, see Jordan Oliver take on Brando Lee, knockout or submission. These two have faced off before, and Brando Lee has successfully knocked out Jordan Oliver, but Jordan Oliver has successfully tapped out Brando Lee. So who will win the rubber match? Also, the top guy, Griffin McCoy, takes on Miles Hawkins. Miles Hawkins believes he's been overlooked by CZW management, and the best way to get a look from CZW management is to take out the top guy. Plus, see Gabby Gilbert take on Mika and the Lost Boys in tag team action against Post Game. It all goes down this Saturday aboard the Battleship New Jersey at 4 p.m. Get your tickets now at czwrestling.com. Today on the Soapbox, I got something a little bit different for you and something that uh, I would like to invite you to participate in. One of my least favorite cliches in the world of professional wrestling is whenever anything insane happens, someone says, Pooh, didn't have that on my 2023 bingo card. Yeah, it's, it's a weird thing. Why, why do you have a bingo card that has predictions of what the future holds? So I figured let's do that. I'm going to make a bingo card for 2024. These are my predictions of what I think might happen. Now, here are the rules. And if you want to make your own, go to uh, bingobaker.com and you can make your own, send it to me, and uh, we'll keep track in the year 2024 and see if we get any bingos. But you have to follow these uh, simple rules. One, you cannot predict a death. No predicting that someone is going to die or get injured. Uh, I think that that's in bad taste, so let's just avoid that. Uh, two, it has to be something so bold that it would make someone say, Puh, didn't have that on my bingo card. If you predict something like, Becky Lynch becomes WWE Women's Heavyweight Champion. It's like, well, yeah. Of, of course. Big Show turns heel in AEW. Okay, yeah, that's what he does. He just turns heel all the time. Kenny Omega has a five-star match. Anything that's, like, obvious or not completely surprising, you can't put on your card. It's got to be things that when someone says, huh, didn't have that on my bingo card, you can go, I did. How about that? So here are some of my very, very bold predictions that I have on my bingo card. So when I made my bingo card, it was immediately put into like a random order. So this is in no particular order. But the first one is something that I think is probably going to happen. And I think it's a bit of a bold one and not one that you might've thought of right away. My first one is, I believe that the new TNA Impact will beat Dynamite in the rating. Now, I know that they're currently not going head-to-head, -head, and I personally love AEW, and I don't really watch Impact, but I really feel like Impact has kind of gotten this nice bit of momentum going ever since they did the UK tour. They're bringing in some really great talent, and it's different from all the other products. It's a little bit sillier. It's a bit more fun. People die in TNA. 
So I think that there will be a week where the ratings for Impact will be higher of that of AEW Dynamite. And I say that as an AEW Dynamite guy. I think it's going to happen. The, you're getting an idea of the level of that's not on my bingo card that I want on these cards. So that's my first one. Next, I think that the WWE will announce one of their big five pay-per-views. That is a WrestleMania, a SummerSlam, a Royal Rumble, a Money in the Bank, or a Survivor Series will take place in Saudi Arabia. Now, I'm not saying that it will happen this year in Saudi Arabia. I'm simply saying that they will announce it's coming. So if they announce that the 2026, you know, WrestleMania will take count, take place in Saudi Arabia, I, I win. I still win. I don't think it'll be a WrestleMania. I think it's possible to be a WrestleMania. I think it's more likely to be either a Money in the Bank or a Survivor Series in Saudi Arabia. I don't think they'll do WrestleMania there. I don't think they'll do SummerSlam there just because heat. Uh, I also, like, there's also something, like, American about SummerSlam. I know that there was a SummerSlam that took place in England, but biggest party of the summer, I don't know, there's something kind of American about, like, the lazy days of summer and summer parties to me. And I've noticed that they like to bring a big thing to Saudi Arabia. Like, they've brought the Hell in a the Cell, they've brought the Elimination Chamber, they've already brought the greatest Royal Rumble there. I don't think they'll bring back the Royal Rumble again. But bringing a bunch of ladders and doing a Money in the Bank, I could totally see them doing that. Or bringing two rings and a cage to go around it and bringing war games to Saudi Arabia. I don't know if they like the word war over in Saudi Arabia. But... I could totally see that happening. So I'm saying one of the big five, and I know that sounds like I'm hedging my bets, because I am. I could have just said Survivor Series, but no, I'm going to say a big five pay-per-view takes place in Saudi Arabia. Uh, next, I know I, I said as an example that something like Becky Lynch winning the Women's Championship doesn't count. But I think this one counts. I think at some point in 2024, we will see a Women's Championship on Natalia. I think Natalia has been slept on for far too long. Natalia is a veteran and is kind of like the last of a generation of divas. <laughs> like she's one of the last divas that has existed in the, the WWE. So I think it's high time that we get a women's championship on her. You might notice my square doesn't say WWE champion. I could totally see her hop in the fence and go into another company and becoming women's champion. I meant WWE's champion, but I didn't write that in my square. So I'm going to I'm going to get hedge my bets and say, "Hey, look who's over in TNA. It's Natty Nightheart with the women's championship." So I think I'm going to see a women's championship around the waist, a singles women's championship around the weight of Natalia. Uh, next one is a bit of a controversial one. And it's one that has never happened in the history of the WWE. This one thing has never happened. And there's been people calling for it to happen. But I think now with the merger of TKO and them being more aware of what they want their brand to look like, I predict that someone will be removed from the WWE Hall of Fame. There's quite a few names in there that are controversial, and I could totally see someone being pulled out. I know that there were protests to get Trump removed. Uh, I believe the fabulous Moolah is still listed in the Hall of Fame. There's a couple other people with dodgy pasts, uh, super flies in there. I could totally see something happening and WWE actually removing someone from the Hall of Fame. It's never happened before, but I'm gonna say it happens this upcoming year. Uh, next, this is another tricky one because I'm not sure if they've officially announced that they're doing a show in this region, but I believe an AEW championship will change hands in Japan. There's been a lot of talk of Wrestle Dream happening in the Tokyo Dome, but that's all been speculation. 
If this happens, I honestly don't think it'll be an AEW pay-per-view. I could see the International Championship changing hands at a New Japan show. Uh, or perhaps like some tag titles changing hands at a New Japan show. I think the Japanese market is a thing that AEW in particular is very invested in gaining and making sure that it doesn't go to the WWE. And what better way to do that than have a historic moment take place in Japan this upcoming year. So I think a title will change hands in Japan. Next, this one hurts me. This one hurts me and I don't like that it's on my list, but it's on my list. Because with all the cuts that were taking place behind the scenes, we know that Black Week that takes place after WrestleMania where there's a bunch of releases. So I tried to think, what would be the most upsetting release that I actually think would happen? Someone that's like very top tier and I could see WWE cutting them loose. Like, who's going to be the Rusev of this group of cuts? Or the Dolph Ziggler of this group of cuts? I, again, hedged my bets a little bit, and I said, a New Day release. Not all of them, but I could totally see the WWE releasing a member of the New Day. Uh, I unfortunately think it could be Big E if they don't think Big E will be coming back and I could see him being released from his talent contract and then being brought in as an agent in some way. I could also see Kofi being released. I think Kofi had his run at the top and I could see the WWE thinking that they've done everything they could with Kofi Kingston and cutting him loose and he would immediately show up on AEW. I don't think Woods. Woods I think is too valuable because of the up, up, down, down stuff but not impossible. We've seen some blindsiding releases before, and that's the most upsetting one I think I could come up with that I think could actually happen, because I don't think they're gonna release like Seth Rollins or anything. So I went with a New Day release. Next, this is probably the silliest one in all of this. Uh, I said, now that the actor strike is over, Dwayne Johnson gets an Oscar nod. I think The Rock has done everything he has do needs to do in the world of comedies and in the world of action films that he is probably itching to get himself uh, into one of those dramatic roles, something he can really stick his teeth into. I know he already did, what was that, Walking Tall, where we had a two by four that was almost a serious movie. I don't know, the secondary lead in that was Johnny Knoxville, so I don't know how much of a serious movie that could have been. Uh, but I think we're just waiting for that, like, serious role out of Dwayne Johnson. And he's a fantastic actor. I love him in Be Cool. If you've never seen Be Cool, go back and watch Be Cool. It's the sequel to Get Shorty. Fantastic film. Uh, and I, I think The Rock... It's like the last thing he, he needs to do before he rules over entertainment uh, with an iron fist. So I will say Dwayne Johnson gets an Oscar nod. That's a much more fun one than the previous one. Uh, the next one, also really fun, that I really like. Uh, let's talk about CM Punk. Everyone's wondering what's next for CM Punk. And... The idea of CM Punk as the devil is one of my favorite things that is currently going around online. I don't think it's true, but it's fun to kind of like daydream. Uh, we've been talking about the idea of him going back to WWE and WWE doesn't need him. Like they've been drawing great without him. He's an expensive headache that they don't really need right now. So I don't think he's going to the WWE. But WWE isn't the only property under TKO. You got Ultimate Fighting, a place that he's already had two fights. Could UFC bring back CM Punk? No, that's absolutely ridiculous. But I do see him showing up under the TKO banner. This is probably my silliest one, but I love it so much. CM Punk to Power Slap. I don't think he'll participate. He'll probably be like a color commentator, but I could totally see WWE not wanting to bring him in 
but giving him something to do to stop him from going elsewhere. CM Punk to power slap. How fun is that? I mean, I'd love to see him slapping people. I don't think he will, but CM Punk to power slap. Make it happen. Uh, next, uh, another one that I, I think this is probably my least likely one, even though it makes the most sense. And that's ROH Rampage. I think Rampage is a useless show right now. Now that we have Collision and Dynamite, I think Rampage is, for some reason, this like bad version of, it, it feels like a Sunday Night Heat. Uh, it makes me miss Dark. I felt like Dark and Dark Elevation was more interesting to watch because you got to see these independent stars. And now Rampage is just kind of like floating in the abyss as just kind of like this weird secondary. It's kind of like main event now. So why have it? Let's give ROH some TV time. ROH Rampage. I don't think they're going to do it. Like... There's so many other reasons why they wouldn't do this. The, the idea of having the AEW brand is probably more valuable to the network than the ROH brand. That being said, that was my solution, and I don't think I have ROH anywhere else on my bingo card, so I wanted to make sure I included it somewhere, and that's what I came up with. Next, this is something I talked about way back in my Who Will Buy the WWE uh, video, which is still a great video, even though I got it entirely wrong. It's still fun. Check that one out. But this is something that I think the WWE has wanted to do for a long, long time. And I think now they have the money to do it. I think we're getting an Undertaker movie. We've already had Escape the Undertaker on Netflix, but why not just do a movie about the Undertaker? I think there's a, even a really good chance that the Undertaker will not be played by the Undertaker. I think they will find someone else to play that character and they'll just adapt the wrestling character into a new film. Or maybe we'll get a biopic. I could, t I mean, we already have Iron Claw coming out. Uh, I could totally see them wanting to do that with another wrestler and the WWE would probably pick The Undertaker out of all the other wrestlers because they have the best relationship with them and it's probably the most interesting story you can tell. Next. My boy, I've always been a big fan of Dolph Ziggler. And a lot of people think Dolph Ziggler is the devil. I, I don't think it's Dolph Ziggler. Because I think Dolph Ziggler is headed to New Japan. I think a lot of people have talked about Dolph Ziggler in AEW because his brother's there. Uh, Dolph Ziggler to TNA because that's used to be the, the joke. Is What is Zolf Diggler doing in the Impact Zone? I think he's gonna to go to New Japan. I think that's a new challenge for Dolph, working with new people that he hasn't worked with yet. He can build new relationships. I wanna see him in New Japan, personally. So, Dolph Ziggler in New Japan. And then, right next to it, MJF to WWE. I mean, we've talked about the bidding war in 24, and we're gonna be in 24. It's coming up. And the idea that AEW has invested so much in Maxwell Jacob Freeman, the idea of him leaving now seems ridiculous. But I could almost see MJF signing or tr attempting to sign a one-year contract with WWE. And I almost think that would be the best thing for AEW. Because now you have the AEW champion, someone who was the AEW guy, a guy that was built in AEW, not Jericho, not Mox, not Cody, not one of those names, someone that you only knew from AEW who rose to the top, leaving and going to the WWE. It would cause a lot of discussion in WWE about AEW, and it would tell a great story in 2025 if it then came back as either the conquering hero with the WWE did everything I needed to do and now I'm back or as this kind of like sniveling like I went to WWE and I couldn't hang and now I'm here I'm back please take me back I think you could tell like very interesting stories I think the idea that MJF is going to WWE is a thing that we're pretending is storyline but I honestly think there's a good chance he's going to jump the fence. He wants that mania moment, moment, I'm calling it. He's going over to WWE. 
and staying with people who jump the fence to WWE. Whew, I really think this is true. Cody Rhodes doesn't finish the story. I'm saying that we're going the entire 2024 without Cody Rhodes winning the big one. I think it's too funny, first off. Uh, I think they're, they're going to keep it on Roman. Like, after what happened last year, I was like, oh, they're going to keep it on Roman forever. They're going to keep it on Roman until he breaks all the records. And the idea of him holding it for another two years, a year ago, seemed ridiculous. But now, it's only for one year before he beats Hogan's record, I believe. Why not do that? Stories never get finished. It's the WWE. It's constantly moving on. You shouldn't have gone to AEW and start the greatest competition that we have now. I'm going to say Cody doesn't finish the story. Uh, next, this is just kind of a big one. It's a blanket one that I wanted one that would last the whole year. So I wanted to put a negative in, something that I think won't happen for a full year. And I went with the WWE will have zero tournaments. I love a good tournament. I think tournaments are great. And I've just did a video about how the WWE has war strategy against AEW. And one of their big strategies is to do something different. And AEW has a tournament all the time. Like there's eliminator tournaments and then there's interim tournaments. There's this weird J1 climax thing that they're doing soon. They love their tournaments. I think WWE to stay different, to not you know, appeal to the same uh, audience or the same, same, you know, flavors as AEW. We'll just avoid tournaments. We will not get a King of the Ring this year. I will say there are no tournaments, which is gutsy because it's the way you solve when someone gets injured while holding a title. I'm still saying it, no tournaments in the WWE this year. I'm not counting NXT because NXT will have a breakout tournament. I'm sure of it. No WWE tournaments. Next, Rey Mysterio will unmask. I think Rey Mysterio is one of the greatest of all time, the greatest masked wrestler of all time. And I think he's done everything in the WWE that you can do, except take the mask off. And yeah, I was a WCW fan. I remember the Filthy Animals. I've seen his face before, but it's been decades. I'm sure it looks different now. I think Mysterio unmasking, perhaps doing the mask versus hair thing with Dominic, even though like Dominic and and Ray have been like really separated and we still have plenty of time before Mania. That's a Mania match. I don't know if they want to go to that well again, but I could see Mysterio unmasking in the new year. Uh, this is a weird one. And I, I, it did all the things I need to say about this uh, didn't fit in the box, so I need to like really explain it. Everyone but Finn Balor in the Judgment Day will win a singles title. Uh, I mean, we already have uh, Rhea. Rhea already has the title. But I honestly believe that we will have a successful cash-in and we'll see Damian Priest as champion soon. I think J.D. McDonough is actually going to be winning a title soon. I, I get that like feeling off of him. And uh, I'm not counting NXT, so I'm saying WWE titles. So uh, the North American Championship does not count. So I could totally see Ray, or not Ray, uh, Dominic becoming U.S. champion. I also, for some reason in my brain, see uh, McDonough with the Intercontinental Championship. I don't know why. And I don't see him being the one that beats Gunther. But for some reason, I just see him as Intercontinental Champion. So I think everyone's going to get a single title except for Finn. And I love Finn Balor. He's my favorite out of the Judgment Day. And maybe I just said that because I'm angry about the way that they treat him. But I think everyone except for Finn will win a singles title. Next, who, if you thought Impact beating Dynamite was a strange one, I'm going to say NXT will outdraw SmackDown. Now, it actually makes more sense if you think about it. It's just the first thought of that, of NXT beating SmackDown. Sounds crazy. But NXT is going to be on CW now, and that's network television. It's the last network. It's the bottom one, but it is network television. 
And then you got SmackDown, which is on a Friday and is over on USA. And not everyone has cable. I could totally see NXT beating SmackDown in the ratings. I could see it becoming the number two brand. I don't know about it beating Raw. We'll see if that switches days. But for now, I'm, I'm pretty confident in this one. NXT will beat SmackDown. Uh, another one, this one's just kind of silly. Yet another AEW singles championship. I think they're going to add another singles championship. And... I went with singles because I could also see them like doing a brand split and splitting the tag titles and maybe even the trios titles. But I didn't want to go that far. I, I really think, I, I felt like that was hedging. I think there's going to be another singles title. I could totally see them doing a rebrand like they did with the international title. Uh, I could see them turning the FTW title into like a hardcore championship. Uh, I could also see them introducing some sort of cruiserweight championship because AEW likes to do the things that WCW used to do. So I could totally see a brand new championship. And I said title because they also like to add like weird titles. Like there's the ring, there's the Owen Hart thing, which has a belt as well. I could totally see them adding some other like trophy uh, for it to be a title, in my opinion, you need to defend it once, so maybe the Owen Hart one wouldn't actually count. But I think they're going to add another one, because that's what AEW does. And speaking of things AEW does, here's a thing that they will probably never do, and yet I put it on my bingo card. I have been thinking about how AEW signs everyone. Again, it's a thing I mentioned in my WWE war strategies. So I was like, what would be the strangest signing that AEW would do? And I sat at it and I thought about it. And I was like, you know what? I'd like to see FTR get a manager. I'm saying Jim Cornette will be all elite. I, it's, it's an insane one because Jim doesn't want to travel. But there's so much in AEW that I know Cornette hates. And we all know Cornette hates. And I think bringing him in to spew that hatred would be good television. So why not bring in Jim Cornette to yell and scream? I think all elite Jim Cornette. It's just an amazing graphic that I just need to see. All right, we're on my bottom row now. Uh, and they're all, ooh, the last, the last couple are all weird. Uh, I think Ric Flair is going to wrestle again. I mean, he's been cleared to wrestle. He's, like, if if it was any other man at his age saying he was going to wrestle again would be the craziest thing in the world. I almost think that if Ric Flair wrestles again, people will, instead of saying that wasn't on my bingo card, will say, we all knew it was coming. So this one might be the one that would be disqualified from the bingo card. But yeah, Ric Flair's totally going to wrestle again. He's going to have a match. It'll probably be a tag match. It might even be cinematic. It might just be him getting a quick tag, doing some chops, throwing on a figure four, and blacking out. But he's going to have a match. I should have said has a match, because I don't know if what he'll do will be considered wrestling. But Ric Flair will have another match. Uh, this next one, this is one, I feel like this is the one I'm most confident in out of all of these. This is the one that I really, more than the Saudi Arabia one, uh, more than Dolph Ziggler, more than Rey Mysterio unmasking. And it is pretty insane, but I think this is going to happen. For years now, WrestleMania has been two nights. I believe they will announce a WrestleMania coming up, probably not 41, or definitely not 40, uh, but coming up very soon, they will announce WrestleMania will be two nights in two locations. They've been doing too much of saying, having Cena come out and be like, I want to give you a WrestleMania. And you can't keep making those promises and then not deliver for a decade. So how do you do that? You have WrestleMania England on a Saturday. And then you have WrestleMania elsewhere on a Sunday. You spread everything out. I think maybe even with time zones, that might be beneficial. I think there will be a two-location 
WrestleMania announced next year. Mark my words. This is the one I want you to come back and, and remember and leave comments about because I'm saying it's happening. Two location, WrestleMania announced in 2024. Also, I think there's going to be a Snickers match. Remember remember the, the Mountain Dew Pitch Black match? I think we're going to see more of that. I think we are going to see more sponsored matches. And I think there hasn't been a more loyal WWE sponsor than Snickers. So I think we'll see a Snickers match. I think we might see, if I had to guess when, I think there will be a Snickers Battle Royal at WrestleMania. It would be the Andre the Giant Snickers Memorial Battle Royal. If I had to, if I had to pick. I don't have to. Because I just wrote Snickers match in the box. But I think there's going to be a Snickers match. Uh, the next one, ooh, this is for a very particular audience. But WrestleMania 40 will take place in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The home of the greatest wrestling fans in the world. It says it in the Rocks book. I'm going to be all over that. I, I can't wait for WrestleMania. I probably won't go to the actual show, but I'll go to all the independent shows. And if it doesn't happen at WrestleMania... It'll happen at an sh indie show near WrestleMania. There will be a one-on-one -on -one wrestling match. Maybe not one-on-one, -on -one, but a wrestling match, including Gritty, the mascot for the Philadelphia Flyers. Gritty will get into that squared circle and participate in a wrestling match. Maybe it'll be against Ric Flair and I'll get a double. They're in the same row, so that would be actually really helpful for me. So I'm going to say Gritty has a wrestling match. That's the only one that I could actually make happen. I could just book a building and and spend some money and get gritty in my match. Maybe I'll just, maybe this is, this could be viral marketing for something I'm planning. Who knows? Subscribe and find out. I got one more left because there's a free space. Remember that. So the final one, I wanted to include something about the NWA. And I couldn't say anything nice about them. So I think we will see the NWA get sold. I think there's a lot of problems right now with NWA, and it all comes back to Billy Corgan. Everyone's saying that it was Billy Corgan's idea to do the white powder scene that got them in trouble with the CW and possibly lost them the deal with the CW and set up the T for uh, NXT to knock it out of the park. So I could see... Billy Corgan being the one that gets pushed on the grenade and NWO, NWO, NWA gets sold. Who would buy it? I could see the WWE buying it for the tape library. I could see Tony Khan buying it because he likes to do that. I think Freddie Prince Jr., hey boss, I know you own Premiere. I think Freddie Prince Jr. could swoop in and buy the NWA. I think that would be a good spot for it. But the NWA needs help. And I don't want to see the NWA go away. So let's just say it gets sold. So that was a bit of a strange video. It's not what I usually do. It's just me talking into this camera, making bold predictions. If you want to participate, send me your bingo card. Remember, no death, no injuries. And it has to be something that would make someone say, didn't have that on my bingo card when it happens. I want your bingo card. I'll probably read them on another episode of this here show and if you want to see that first be sure to subscribe right here to plus two wrestling and ring the bell so you'll get a notification when i upload one of these silly videos and most of all i hope that you have a great day